Does space begin? What's in space? Well, Randy knows that the sun is in space. And the moon's in space, too. And at night, Randy can see the stars. They're in space. Randy also knows that the Earth is in space. But the Earth is so big. We can see the Earth better if we move away from it. Higher and higher we go. It is getting cooler as we go up. The air becomes thinner and thinner as we go higher and higher, until at about 60 miles up, where we say space begins, there's almost no air. The Earth is a planet in space, and the Moon is a satellite of the planet Earth. The Moon travels in space, or revolves, around the Earth. It takes about one month for the Moon to make one revolution. The Earth, with its Moon, revolves around the Sun. The time it takes the Earth to make one revolution is called a year. Eight other planets besides the Earth also revolve around the Sun. Each is a satellite of the Sun. The Sun is a star, our star. But it is only one of billions upon billions of stars. Stars and planets and moons are in space. Now, let's go back to Earth and see how we can travel in space. Can we use an airplane to get into space? An airplane engine needs oxygen from the air, and we know there isn't any air in space. But we all know that we can get into space with rockets. Rocket engines don't need oxygen from the air. They carry oxygen with them in their fuel. How does the engine make a rocket move? This balloon filled with gas will show us. These arrows mean that the gas is pushing against the inside of the balloon in all directions. If we open the bottom and let the gas escape, it would not push against the bottom of the balloon anymore. But because the gas is still pushing up at the top, well, watch what happens. The balloon keeps moving up until most of the gas has rushed out of the balloon. Then the balloon comes down. Things that go up usually come down. You can kick a football as hard as you like. And what happens? it comes down. Things that go up come down because of gravity. The Earth's gravity pulls everything toward the center of the Earth. Gravity pulls on a parked car. And at the other side of the Earth, it pulls on a kangaroo. Gravity is holding this model rocket down. When the fuel is ignited, gases will rush out, just as they rushed out of the bottom of the balloon. Now the rocket is ready to be launched. The boy and his father won't stay too close. That's the safe way. Four, three, two, one, lift off. The model rocket moves faster and higher than the balloon did, because gases are being pushed out of it with greater force and for a longer time. After a short flight, the rocket is pulled back to Earth. To make a rocket go into space, we need one that carries more fuel. 
we need a large rocket, like this one. The rocket leaves the Earth. Soon its motion is changed so it will follow a path around the Earth. If the rocket has another section or stage, the fuel of the second stage may be ignited to make it travel even faster while the first stage falls away. The second stage of the rocket continues traveling in a path or orbit around the Earth. We can now call it a satellite, an artificial satellite of the Earth. The motion of a satellite is something like the motion of a ball on a string. As long as we hold the string and keep the ball moving at the proper speed, the ball goes around and around in orbit. Now let's stop a moment and think about the orbit of any satellite. Gravity pulls on the satellite. As long as the satellite moves at the proper speed, gravity will keep it in orbit. The satellite can stay in orbit for a long time. There are many different satellites now in space. There are satellites that help broadcast radio and television signals all over the world. There are satellites that take photographs. And there are satellites that measure temperature. The different satellites of different sizes and shapes orbit the Earth along different paths. And, of course, astronauts have orbited the Earth, too. Here is one getting into a spacecraft. The spacecraft is launched by a rocket. Astronauts have gone outside their spacecraft and walked in space. They have seen the Earth from space. And they have returned to Earth in their spacecraft. We use rockets not only to orbit satellites and men, but also to launch other spacecraft and men for more distant trips, as for a trip to the moon. Just as the Earth pulls things toward it, so does the moon. As a spacecraft gets closer to the moon, the pull or attraction between the moon and the spacecraft will become greater. This pull can be used to make the spacecraft either land on the moon or orbit it. Here we see the path a spacecraft from Earth follows as it lands on the moon. And here is a photograph of the moon taken by a camera on a spacecraft. This is a photograph of part of the planet Mars taken from a spacecraft. Many new adventures lie ahead in space, such as placing a very large space station into orbit around the Earth. This is a plan for a space station. Here is where the spaceman scientists live. Here is where experiments with animals can be done. From such a space station high above the Earth, an astronomer can study the stars. A weatherman can forecast the weather. Here is the way clouds look when you're several thousand miles from Earth. From the space station, small space capsules would carry spacemen back to Earth. Back to where Randy has been reading about space. Randy take a trip into space someday? Perhaps he won't.